Get your special discount offer on the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com slash video. Macros are little programs that you can record that automate repetitive tasks for you. They're basically little programs. What a macro does is it records your keystrokes as you perform some sort of task routine and saves your keystrokes as a visual basic module, which is a type of small program. When you play the macro back later, it will repeat your keystrokes back and thus repeat your actions. This is why they're great for instantly performing menial tasks. So use the macro recorder to record your macros. And while you're recording macros, you often cannot use your mouse very much, and it's recommended that you try to minimize your mouse movements while recording your macro. Try to use the keyboard for movement and data entry as much as possible within your project file. To start recording a macro, you can select Tools and then roll down to Macro from the menu bar and select the Record New Macro command from the side menu that appears. This will bring up the Record Macro dialog box. Type the name that you want to give to your new macro into the Macro Name text box. Macro names cannot contain any spaces. Next, select where you want to save the macro by choosing the desired project file from the Store Macro in dropdown. If you don't change it, it will default to saving the macro into the global file. This is important because a macro can only be run if it's saved into an open project file or stored into the global file which contains the default project template objects. Next, you can type a description of the function of this macro into the description field. This is an optional step, but it can help clarify the purpose of the macro if the name is unclear. Now the types of cell references that you make while recording a macro can also be adjusted. If recording a macro using relative references, the movements that are recorded are noted in relative terms. So for example, a macro that moves the active cell down one row recorded in relative terms, will always move the active cell down one row from whichever row happens to be selected when your macro is run in the future. If you record a macro using absolute references, the macro will always select and move to the exact same cells in the project file regardless of which cell happens to be selected when your macro is run in the future. Now you can adjust which type of referencing is used when recording your new macro by selecting your desired options in the Row References and Column References sections. By default, macros will record using relative references for row movements and absolute references for column references. Now when you're ready to start recording your actions, click OK. Now at this point, all of your actions will now be recorded, so be careful what actions you perform as mistakes that you make would also be included as part of your macro. If you do make a mistake though, you can simply stop recording the macro and just delete it. Then you can try again. Now to stop recording your actions once you've finished, just select Tools, roll down to Macro, and then choose Stop Recorder. That will stop recording the macro. To play back a macro that you have recorded, select Tools, Macro, and Macros from the menu bar. That will launch the Macros dialog box. Within this dialog box, you'll see a listing of any available macros. Select the name of the macro that you would like to actually run, and note that you might need to use the macros in dropdown to choose where project should look for your macros. Then click on the name of the macro that you would like to run, and then just click the run button at the right side of the dialog box to run the selected macro. Now, a note to users running versions of Microsoft Office, Project, XP, or later. Macros may not run on your PC that used to run in older versions of Microsoft Office Project, and if that is the case, you may need to change the security settings for Microsoft Project in the newer version. 
If the macro security level is set to high, you may need to set it to medium in order to execute older project macros. You can change this setting by selecting Tools and then choosing Options from the menu bar. Then click the Security tab and then click the Macro Security button. You can then select the Option button for Medium to prompt whether or not to enable or disable macros when they are played. At the high setting, older macros will often instantly be disabled. Now finally, you can delete macros that you have stored in a workbook by simply selecting Tools, rolling down to Macro, and then choosing Macros from the side menu in order to launch the Macro dialog box. Once again, select the name of the macro that you want to delete from the list of macros. Then click the Delete button at the right side of this dialog box. You'll be prompted to confirm the deletion of the macro by clicking Yes in the pop-up window that appears. You can also cancel your deletion by just clicking No instead. Like what you see? Get your special discount offer on the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com slash video. Over two dozen titles are available in Microsoft Office, QuickBooks, Photoshop, and much more.